Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now, when I first started looking into the Sphinx mystery a couple years ago, I didn't know what road is going to take me down. Uh, there's always been a mystery what the original Sphinx looked like. Obviously, the head has been recarved maybe many times, and the body was buried for long periods of time, and we just it just seems to be a big mystery what the original form was. And I came across the Anubis theory a couple years ago, and I had nothing to prove. I just wanted to go where the best evidence took me, and it was down the Anubis route as far as the Sphinx goes. And I just want to show you something here. Uh, I haven't been doing a lot of research videos the last five days or week. Busy time of year for people visiting out here, so I've been kind of focused on that. But I have been reading this. This is uh, a guide to the Egyptian collections in the British Museum. This was written by E.A. Wallace Budge in 1909. And it's part of the Pyramid Text Online. I will leave a link for that below. It's an excellent website with a lot of good reading on ancient Egypt. But I just want to go over a few things here I found extremely interesting, how it related to the Sphinx and Anubis. But this is what it looks like here. Paging through this book online, they got a lot of good artwork, depictions of ancient text, and whatnot. But here it says, another most important section of religious literature consists of the funerary inscriptions cut on sepulchral tablets or gravestones which form so large a portion of the Egyptian collections of the British Museum. In the vestibule and galleries is exhibited a splendid series of such monuments, the oldest dating from the 4th dynasty, about 3800 BC, and the most recent from the 1st century AD. Thus the series of these monuments is very great, for they not only give the various forms of prayer to the gods for the sepulchral offerings in the different periods of Egyptian history, but they afford a great deal of information about the attributes of the gods, and they illustrate the growth and decay of many forms of belief and details of ritual, etc. And it says they illustrate the growth and decay of many forms of belief. And I think the, um, the worship of Anubis, it goes back even farther than Osiris, if you read about uh, ancient Egypt in the very early periods, Osiris took over for Anubis as the main god on the Giza Plateau. And I think that's very important. But this book, it uh, maybe depicts uh, or shows about four or five of these sepulchral tablets. And there is a common theme running through all of these. And that is Anubis being displayed at the top. And here is this one. But uh, the main god is always depicted at the top of stelas or the sepulchral tablets. The main god on what the text has to do with or the main god who is worshipped at the time of the inscription is always put at the top. And these sepulchral tablets, uh, if these are gravestones, obviously the preeminent god of resurrection would be displayed at the top. And here is the preeminent god of resurrection, Anubis. And he is also displayed at the top because he was the guardian of the necropolis or the land of the dead, the sacred land of the dead at uh, Giza. He was the Lord of Rostow and Rostow is another name for Giza in ancient times. And here he is looking east, guardian, the sacred land of the pyramids. Anubis was the original form of the Sphinx, I believe. And people, um, I believe through history have just miss this. The very earliest uh, scholars said that the Sphinx was in the form of a lion with a human head. And even alternative researchers, I believe, are missing what the ancient Egyptians are telling us the Sphinx was. And here is the guardian of the sacred land, the necropolis depicted at the top of this gravestone or sepulchral tablet. And does this prove the Sphinx was Anubis in its original form? It doesn't prove it 100%, but it sure comes close, I believe. And the Giza Plateau area was all about resurrection. The pyramids are in the form of Orion's belt, and Orion is directly connected to Osiris and the afterlife and resurrection. Anubis was the preeminent agent of resurrection. Here he is depicted as the Sphinx looking east on the Giza Plateau, I believe. That was the most important monument in Egypt. They didn't have to tell us on here what this was because everybody knew what it was, but I just thought this was very interesting. These are sepulchral tablets. They have Anubis featured at the top of them because he was the original form of the Sphinx. He was the Lord of the Dead and the guardian of the necropolis of Giza. 
Hope you thought this was interesting. You have a nice day.